Well, the weekend has begun. It's become so chaotic when there's a lot of pro wrestling happening. But for today's episode, not only will we be reviewing AEW Collision, as you know, one week from tomorrow, we do have, of course, Wrestle Dream in Seattle. Anything could happen from here on out. But we do have, of course, the TNT title and the World Tag Team titles online. And the main event features Ricky Starks and Brian Danielson in a Texas death match. So we're going to see how brutal that's going to be. But first things first, we're going to review some recent events dating back a few months. Well, the first one is from Got to Move, which is, of course, the main brand of Choco Pro with four aces that dates back all the way from last month on the 6th where they were in uh, Takashi Daima which is a very interesting venue that of course I've seen Gambari Pro and a few other low, uh, lower level um, promotions do their shows then we move on until uh, Choco Pro 333, 331 where we have of course some, uh, some three matches involving but a very interesting title was passed along Throughout this entire time, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And then finally, as you know, the the New York City Yoshi promotion that was talked about for a while has now become into reality. So I finally got to review that. So we're going to talk about that too. But also we have some news updates to cap up everything. One, of course, we have more two more names that have been announced for releases by WWE. Um, a match has been set for. Spark Yushi Perusa for the Rising Heat West. And then finally, of course, Eddie Kingston made a statement regarding of him as a double champion. As you know, he is the Ring of Honor World Champion and the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship. So we'll see what happens from here on out. So let's get ready for another episode of the Leaded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we review a lot of pro wrestling shows from anywhere in the world. Not only here in the States, but also in Japan. Mexico, Canada, Europe, UK, anywhere in the world where wrestling is big, but whatever country is starting out is, even though it's not big enough, it's growing stronger. We also do some BWZ discussions, some news update alerts to keep it what's going on in the world of wrestling at a, at a perfect timing when it's been announced, and of course the Unagi Sayaka watch and various other things. So if you like this channel, if you want to see more daily reviews on this one please subscribe to us and we'll be doing this almost every day as possible but also if you guys know we do if you guys like this episode please give us a like and of course give us a nice comment in the bottom so let's talk about our very first uh review and this is dink bats back in august 6th this is from got to move pro wrestling this is emmy sakura's promotion uh, this is where they do been doing shows for once a month and this one took place recently on August 6th in Takashima now I don't know why they waited a month to release it. It's not the first time they have done it But I decided why not since we're only one month off. Let's just do it anyway, so it opened up with um, Emi Sakura giving the lowdown on the matches taking place and all this other stuff but also all of a sudden her protege and student uh, May sure comes out to do a little small performance for everyone. Uh, this is a little song that she created when, of course, we see her on Choco Pro. So I thought it was really fun entertainment. But let's get started with the first matches. Our first one, we have 
Nonoka Seto taking on Chi Koshikawa. Now, this is a case of master versus student. As you know, Chi Koshikawa did help out with some of the newer girls that came out, such as Mia Yasuba. But Mei Suga was the main person who trained these girls. Um, you probably would have thought that the energy of Nonoka would have been decisive. But however, when it comes to Chi, who has a bit of the more experienced in her, you know that she was going to win this match when she applied the muffler, forcing her to tap out. Now our next match, we have a very interesting six-person tag match of intergenders. We have Sayaka Obihiro, Antonio Honda, Tokiko Hira. They take on Sayaka, Tai Hamna, and of course, whoa, 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 back communications, Kevin Oka. I thought this match was going to be a lot interesting, not to mention when it comes to Antonio Honda, you know that he's going to throw in some of his comedy routine in the match. That never ceased to stop right there. And of course, the several misfires between him and Tokiko, that always helps. But however, Tokiko got away with it. Even the referee didn't do a thing. Uh, she fired some confetti right in the face of Sayaka, allowing for, of course, uh, Antonio Honda to do a bridge right on on her to pick up the pin and it was over just like that next up a really interesting tag team match we have masahiro takanashi teaming up with the former super agent champion haganeshino uh it's been a while since we've seen him the last time we saw him he lost the title to uh, emi sakura who i think is currently still the champion i don't think she hasn't defended it just yet. Uh, i don't know if she's defended it recently but who knows but it, they face against um, Monotatsu Nakamura from Gambari Pro. And of course, his another person from Gambari Pro, Shujihiro Katsumura. Um, you probably can guess this match was going to be very interesting. However, in the end, it was, of course, Haganeshino with the Rahin, the Renhi, that picked up the win on Nakamura. I thought it was a very impressive match. So it's great to see him back. So that was great. Now our next match, this is a case of student versus teacher, and we're not talking about Mia or, or Mei Shuga. This is another group of, of students. Now keep in mind, if you guys know Emi Sakura all too well, you know she is responsible for several wrestlers that she trained. And two of them are were our AEW Women's World Champion, Riho and Hikari, um, Shida, Hikaru Shida. And also she's well known to be training, uh, she trained Sakuza Fujimoto, uh, of course, um, many other girls, but not to mention uh, her opponent, Natsumi uh, Mochi Natsumi from Prominence. So it's kind of interesting to see those two. I thought it was really fun and aggressive between those two because you know that the student would do whatever it takes to surpass their teacher. That's always been the case that we've seen on this type of matches. However, in the end, it was, of course, the Mahestral that never seems to fail Emi Sakura to pick up the win against Mochi Matsumi. Now, our main event, of course, this is another student versus teacher match. Mei Shruga versus Miya Yatsuba. So, as you know, I mentioned this um, countless times. It, I don't know how much I have. But, of course, we have, May, uh, as you know, Miya Yatsuba is the non emi sakura trainee she was never trained by emi sakura while emi sakura was still here in the states may shuga stepped up as one of the trainers to help uh create the next generation and i think that's a very cool thing uh but of course there have been some back and forth between these two uh on singles action tag team actions and they team up together but this is a the got to move setting it, it was i thought it was Interesting, but I have witnessed um, Mia has grown so much. And of course, you guys remember, recently she just won her first uh, match, but in a tag team setting, kind of like Waka did. But uh, in this case, it was Mei Shruga who picked up the win when she pinned Mia Tsuba, and it was over just like that. So it was a great moment. So, so it was really cool. I don't know when the next Got to Move show will be, but I'm looking forward to it. And I think we're going to move on with the next review, which is, of course, the Choco Pro brand by God to move with 331. Okay. 
Choco Pro 331. This just recently took place on the 17th of September, not too long ago. I don't know why they just waited this long, but it did. Uh, it opened up, but of course, with May Shruga doing her thing, uh, doing a little that little small performance that she normally does, and of course, uh, giving the lowdown of the matches of the day. So let's get started with our first match. Our first match is tag team action. We got Tokiko Kihara teaming up with Masahiro Takanashi. They take on Shin Suzuki and Dr. Gore. Um, I don't recall if Dr. Gore has ever teamed up with anybody from the Got to Move brand or Choco Pro. I know he's originally from Thailand for the Setup Thailand Pro Wrestling uh, promotion. Uh, but, of course, I have to say Shin and Dr. Gore seem like they worked very well together in this match. I know Masa has teamed up with various people in the past, different various partners, tag partners that he normally teamed up with, but his main partner has always been uh, Chris Brooks. But uh, I was so impressed by this match because it was later, um, of course, Shin Suzuki who picked up the win by applying a suplex onto Koki to Kiko Kihara to pick up the W for him and of course with the um Dr. Gore. So now speaking of set up, as you know, one of their others talent that showed up. Uh I messed up his name. His name is Momonov. Uh he came out with a very uninteresting title that I don't know, and he faces Balinaki. I'm not sure if this is more of the equivalent of a 24-7 belt. Uh, but you can tell this match was very impressive because I never seen Momonov before. Uh, but it was really interesting to see it. However, Balinaki, as you know, who has been one of the top stars of the promotion, has always been very impressive. But he picked up the win when he applied a big body splash onto Momonov. And one, two, three, it was over. But however, he had a, he beat him, that means he won his belt. So that's kind of interesting. I know it's been a while since we've seen him win the championship, but there's more about this belt that I don't know much, but there's some things that happen because of this belt. And I'll explain a little bit. Now, our last match, we have a six-woman tag match. Mochi Natsumi takes on, teams up with the sisters, Mia Yosuba and, of course, Nonoka Seto. Now, keep in mind, Mia has already been what has already celebrated one year anniversary as a win, uh, but her sister she just barely started out a couple of months ago. So this is a very interesting pairing. However, they face against a team that has far more better experience than her. As you know, Mei Shuga it has five years of experience, but her tag partners Chiko Shikawa and Sayaka they only have four years of experience. So that kind of sets it all. So this is a very interesting dynamic. You have one team that does have more experience, but they team up with a wrestler who has more experience, but the other two have less. So that kind of plays out pretty well. But, of course, seeing both Mia and Nonoka actually teaming up together as a tag, that's a very interesting development. But, however, in the end, it was Chiko Shikawa that picked up the win by pinning Maya Yotsuba, just like that. So it was very really interesting, but, however, I know for a fact that Nonoka in time will get, gain more momentum and pick up her first win, just like her sister did on the last Choco Pro show. So we'll see what happens from here on out. Now, however, the Jonkin tournament was a very interesting. I just, in the first round, uh, Mei Shuga did not surpass the first round, neither did Balinaki, but however, because he lost the Jonkin tournament, the belt that he won from Momonov, he, ha he had to give it up and lost it to Shin Suzuki. Now, that belt later was lost to Ma Masahiro Takanashi. But the biggest surprise is who actually won the the Jonkin. And I was expecting this was going to happen sooner or later. We're talking about Nonoka Seto. So she won the... But however, her opponent that she'd been in Jonkin tournament is none other than Masahiro Takanashi. Who actually won that belt from Shin Suzuki. That crazy belt that Momonoth won. So she gets her first championship belt, but I'm going to presume that this belt is more of a you lose it and whatever stipulation of a match. Nothing compared like the 24-7 belt, but uh, hopefully I can find out some answers, but we'll see what happens until then. Until the next Choco Pro will be the next episode. So uh, right now let's move on to, of course, the Yoshi promotion 
that's been created here in the state. Um, Sub uh, Sukentan, Sukentan, whatever it's called itself. So we'll get to that. Okay, the long-awaited promotion that's been talked about for quite some time. The Yoshi promotion that was going to be based out of New York City. Um, Su Keban, hopefully I pronounced it right. This one features a lot of freelance wrestlers in Japan. So we didn't know if this was a reality or this was just another hoax. However, it became a reality. I did talk about, okay, who's involved in what, who's involved in what group. Who, um, which wrestlers will be involved? Keep in mind, this is something similar as, of course, Lucha Underground. So we'll get out explain who's who in this one. Now, our first match is a trios match. We have the Vandals, consistent of Atomic Banshee, which is of course Ram Kaicho, Bingo. I'm trying to remember who that is. I think I discovered the name. The person behind the mask is um, Miyaku Matsumoto. And then, of course, um, Ota Otaku-chan, which is Kaioru Yoyanama. Their opponent is none other than the Cherry Bomb Girls, consistent of uh, Supersonic. Uh, I think that one is played out by, um, I forgot who else. Uh, Rico Blondie, from, uh, who is Rico Kaiju. And then, of course, we have uh, Crush You, which plays by you. A uh, very interesting match, you know, you probably would have thought, of course, it was a very fun. However, we did see some interesting teamwork amongst uh, themselves with their own factions. But in the end of this, it was, of course, you who did a big uh, splash onto Okutan. Uh, Okut, uh, um, what was it? Otaku. And just like that, it was over right from there. Now, our next match is a three-way match. We have... The Queen of Hearts, who represents Dangerous Liaisons, uh, versus Suki no Saki Bini, which is, of course, Saki. Consistent, uh, she's representing, of course, later it was announced by Beta Scott or Sam Laterna. Uh, she's part of the ha Harukuju Stars. And then their surprise opponent is, of course, uh, Konami. So I was not expecting that. It was going to be an interesting match. Now keep in mind... Uh, she was not affiliated with any other team, but in the end, it was of course a configuration to turn a, a whatever move Saki was about to pull to her with a sunset flip to pick up the win. However, of course, uh, the obvious question is: Will she join any group, any faction? Well, apparently, she joined the Queen, uh, joined the Dangerous Liaison because Queen of Hearts is part of that, and then they attacked. Uh, Saki, but luckily Maya decided to show up and give a helping hand to her teammate. So this thing is not far from over. Now our next match, we have Midnight um, player consistent of AI. She takes on Stray Cat, who is portrayed by none other than Tomoka Inaba. So basically, Stray Cat is currently an unaffiliated wrestler. So basically. Um, She's not affiliated with any of the factions, like the Vandals, the Cherry Bomb Girls, the Harajuku Stars, and Dangerous Liaisons. There's only four four factions, but she's the only one who's not affiliated. But the match was pretty good. Uh, but of course, she um, Stray Cat applied that one shot, one kill kick, which of course Tomokai now uses. But it worked and it was effective. But as soon as the match was over, it was Stray Cat winning. Uh, it appears that M Midnight Player wanted to have her join the Vandal, so it doesn't seem like she's interested. I think she's interested in being, uh, well, not a lone wolf, but more like a lone cat or something. I don't know. I don't know if there's a lone cat. I mean, I have a cat, and he's right here sleeping next to me. Is there a lone cat, like a lone wolf type? I don't know. But we'll, we'll see. <laughs> now... Our next match is a tag team match. We have the Harajuku Stars, consistent of Babyface, portrayed by Ann Cham. And, of course, we have Ma her tag team partner, um, Maya Ma Mushi, uh, portrayed by Maya Hiki. They take on the Dangerous Liaisons, consistent of Commander Nakajima, uh, portrayed by Aras, um, Arasi, Arisa Nakajima. And then, of course, 
Lady Antoinette, betrayed by none other than uh, Risa Sarah. Uh, the match was pretty straightforward, very, you uh, like they just completely tried to be more aggressive as possible. But however, towards the end, it was of course um, the cutie special by Nakajima onto Babyface to pick up the win. Now, before our main event, we had the surprise visit of a Japanese Yoshi legend. And he, this person's name was mentioned many times during that she was going to be involved in a some way of a backstage setting. It was none other than Bull Nakano. So I have to say it was great to see her. I haven't I've seen clips of her in her wrestling, but later she revealed that she is, of course, the commissioner of this promotion. And of course, she displayed a brand new title, which is the um, Suke, uh, Sukeban ta uh, World Championship. But there's going to be a w uh, Eliminator match taking place. And this was our main event. We have, of course, uh, Ichiko Sayaka, portrayed by Unagi. And then there's Countess uh, Sayori, which is portrayed by Sayori Inoue. Now, I have to say the match was great, but there was a mishap in the match that I think many of the fans thought it was over because we thought Ichiko Sayaka picked up the win. No, the match had to continue. But it was, of course, uh, a pinfall made by Ichiko Sayaka onto Sayori, and it was over right from there. And, of course, Nakajima showed up. As you know, Kaun the Sayori is a member of the um, Dangerous Liaisons. But later, Bull Nakano revealed that the next event will feature... Of course, the crowning of a brand new champion, which is, of course, Ichiko Sayaka will face at a Commander Nakajima for this belt. So, I don't know when is is going to happen, but yeah. But, if you at, but now let me give you guys my thoughts. What I thought about this show, I have to say, is nothing compared like Lucha Underground, where there was like a setting, like in a warehouse, or telling the story in a way where it's like, we've seen but no this was very interesting but of course they showed a bit of the anime characters like when they're saying announced who's going to be facing who so that's a very unique i have to say the characters are unique i have to say there's certain aspects of the matches that are pretty interesting to follow but uh we'll see how this one rolls out i can't wait to see how the next event will take place so we'll see from there uh, right now, let's move on to our last and final review, which is, of course, AW Collision. Okay, AEW Collision. We're only one week from today till we get to Wrestle Dream in Seattle, which is going to be a very good event to honor Antonio Onoki. However, anything could happen from here on out. So let's get started with this now. Our opening match is the the TNT title in a three-way match. Uh, Darby Allen versus Lu uh, Christian Cage versus Luchasaurus. Now, Darby is no idiot. He knows that this match is a handicap no matter what Christian Cage thinks. He thinks that he's high and mighty, thinking that the TNT title has been disrespected. And, of course, he had the tendency to call certain wrestlers their dads that they're dead because of this and that. And, of course, he's been trying to persuade Nick Wayne to say don't trust Darby because he's not a wrestler he's not that but however the match was very interesting so Darby was able to hold his own but however he had this match won when he applied the coffin drop onto Luchasaurus Christian Cage tossed him out he pinned Luchasaurus to become the TNT which is officially habit because he spent the entire time since winning the TNT title claiming he is the champion nope he wasn't However, that wasn't the case later after that. He thought, well, he was in an interview with Tony Schiavone saying, I'm dedicating this match to Nick Wayne's parents, his dad and his mom, you know, thinking he's showing his appreciation. But however, he just stated, I don't have to deal with you, Darby. It's over. You're done. But Tony Schiavone told him by uh, orders from Tony Khan, since Darby already pinned him twice. That means that he will get a shot of the TNT title at Wrestle Dream, which of course Darby Allen, I mean uh, Christian Cage, did not want. So he thought it was over. Well, seems it's not over just yet until the Fat Lady sings. So we'll see what happens next week when we come to Dynamite. Now, as you know, 
we saw what happened this past Wednesday or you know, on Rampage. The most interesting development, Tris Jericho and Kenny Omega working together on one common goal is to get rid of Don Callis. But the obvious question does remain. How does Don Callis feel that his creation to have the match between Jericho and Kenny become an ally? Well, it did sicken him from what he said. So he said that he's not concerned over the fact that the match... But he, because he strongly believed that this match will go in his favor. Since, of course, Takeshita uh, beat him twice already in, in seven days. Sammy Guevara, who is the newest member of the Don Callis. But he did state it. The third man that would join him will be the one person, of course, that defeated Jericho and Kenny in a matter of two months. So, however, Don Callis is confident enough to believe that this match will go straight to the Don Callis family. But we'll see what happens until then. Now, our next match we have Hook versus Rob Van Dam. Now, there, uh, what I did like about something about this is Dar um, Kevin Kelly mentioned that RVD has teamed up in the past with Taz, and of course he's now teaming up with his son. So it's a very unique team to work in the seat. But however, their opponents are none other than Daddy Magic. Matt Menard and Cool Hand Angela Parker. However, X Factor of this match is, of course, they've brought in tow Anna J and Jake Hager. Now, you probably would have assumed that this match was going to fall in their favor. No, it did not because, of course, uh, Darby Allen and no, uh, Hook and Rob Van Dam took matters into their own hands. It was, of course, Hook who applied the red drum onto Matt Menard, while, of course, um, Rob Van Dam applied the Five star frog splash onto Parker to pick up to win. So I thought it was really fun, and it was just like that. Uh, I'm, I, uh, one day I would like to hear the, the the reaction and comments from Taz about seeing his son team up with RVD. I, that's something I definitely want to see. Now, this is a very interesting development that happened. As you know, Eddie Kinston is now double champion. He is the Ring of Honor World Champion and the New Japan Strong Openweight Champion. So he decided, I'm going to put both titles on the line, but he's going to do that at Wrestle Dream. And the opponent he wants to face says it's ironic that Wrestle Dream will be paying tribute to Antonio Noki. So, what better opponent to someone who idolized or driven by the style of strong style? And that is none other than Kasiori Shibata. So, I say this is going to be a very interesting match to watch because, of course, um, Eddie Kingston, he has the love for Japanese wrestling. So this is going to be a cool way to honor Antonio Noki. So I can't wait to see that. Now, once again, Dark Order did a little video package where they're saying they are good. So I don't know what that means, but we'll see where it goes from there. Now, the Kingdom, as you know, are pretty much, as you know, they went on a rampage this past Friday on a rampage. Where they throw a little temper tantrum towards, of course, the best friends. Now, keep in mind their buddy, Roderick Strong, who broke his neck. Apparently, they criticized uh, Chuck Taylor. Like saying, hey, your friend Trent Barretta was uh, broke his neck. Where were you? So, they were criticizing him that, saying, you guys are not best friends. Because, Chuck, you weren't there for Trent. I mean, what was he supposed to do? Wait for him until he gets, back, until he gets healed? No. That's exactly what happened. But however, they are determined to have a match against them next week on Collision. So we'll see where that takes us. Now our next match, we have Julia Hart versus Kira Hogan. Now earlier in the day, it was revealed that Julia Hart missed Willow Nightingale. So Kira Hogan decided to step up. However, this was not enough for her to... Um, you know to help but however she did apply the heartless onto Kira Hogan to pick up the win however she decided to punish her some more by applying the heartless but later here comes Sky Blue to give up a helping hand but Brody King who's been there the entire time stood in the way to give time for Julie Hart to miss uh, Sky Blue in the face however it appears that Brody King decided that Julia Hart is time for her to fulfill what she's supposed to do 
which is obtain the TBS title. If you guys remember, during the Jade Cargill match between her and Chris uh, Satlander, she was watching this. So now she called her out saying that she's going to wants her to challenge this belt, um, I believe, ne uh, next week in Wrestle Dream. So that's going to be very interesting to see. I can't wait to when that match is set. Now, uh, our next match, we have Jay White versus Andrade. Now, we know that Andrade has been watching, of course, the bu uh, Bullet Club Gold. I don't know what's the attendance. But, however, he faces against Jay White. Now, Andrade does have a 4-0 record against him. But, of course, I knew this was going to happen. Of course, when, of course, Andrade had Jay White in the figure 8 leg lock, the ass boys decided to interfere to distract the ref, giving uh, Juice Robinson the whack Andrade in the face. But, of course, it ended with the Blade Runner. Very nice touching. I wouldn't be surprised somewhere down the line if we see the LFI La Facción and Granada go to war against Bullet Club Gold. So that's going to be interesting to see. Now, as you know, we saw Ortiz got in the face of Santana this past Friday. We don't know what that means, but it appears he's telling him that he needs to stop running. So basically, he has to face his past somewhere down the line. So we'll see what happens to them. Now, it appears that Shane Taylor, as you know, still has some unresolved issues towards his old tag team partner. And we're talking about Lim Limitless Keith Lee. So, it appears that J uh, Shane Taylor has, like, that resolve issue saying that, hey, I stayed behind to become a legend while you went on to do and become Limitless. So, that sets it all. So, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens until then between those two. Now, before the next match, which is the AEW World Tag Team Cha uh, Championships, we have Ozzy Open, Kyle Fletcher, and Mark Davis head to the commentary to witness the match bet between the Workhorsemen and FTR. Now, this was a very strong match, I have to say. As you know, um, FTR has always been a very impressive tag team. But, however, it was, of course, um, the sharpshooter by Dax Harwood onto J.D. Drake. To allow them to win the match. Now, as soon as the match was over, Ozzy Open shows up, you know, about discussing about the match. But however, FTR were begging them, begging them to let the fire out, let whatever you have in detention you want. So he wants the be the very best of Ozzy Open to come out. So basically, that's what they're saying. So we'll see where that goes from here. Now our next. And the final interview is with Renee. Was it Renee? No, with Lexi. We saw on All Out the, re the sudden appearance of, what's her name? Oh, yeah, of CJ Perry, the wife of Miro. So we don't know what was her tensions, but later, of course, she revealed that she was planning to be her manager again. As you know, he lost his way after losing the title. So he wants to help him out, but Miro doesn't seem like he's interested. So we'll see where this progresses. Now, our main event is the Texas death match between Ricky Starks and Brian Danielson. You know this is going to be a brutalized match, but it did. Uh, but it did allow to everybody to beat the crap out of each other. But however, Ricky Starks uh, lost by count out, uh, out of 10 when he was unable to get up. So I'm like, wow, I can't believe. But the obvious question is, is this over between those two? Well, we don't know. But we'll see what happens until then. But for right now, let's just move on to our last and final thing. Now that we're done with every review, let's talk about some news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news update. So this is what we have for all of you for today. Now, as you know, we had some recently on September 21st, WWE releases. Some of us were a little shocked. Some of them were like, okay, um, don't know much what to say because I didn't, uh, it was probably bound to happen or something. However, you guys felt. However, two more names have been announced. The first one is, of course, Matt Riddle. Now, as you know, there's been a lot of controversy regarding Matt Riddle over his past issues and all this to uh, drug abuse or whatever he was involved so it's not been official that he is officially out they also announced for someone who i never seen before but she was dressed up as part of the uh chase you 
named Melanie um, Brisek-Zink. Hopefully I pronounced it right. I don't know much about her, but you know she was announced. It was announced that she is officially released from the company. Now, a uh, very interesting report coming in from Fightful Select. Um, it was revealed that it w that it was Kenny Dystack, if you guys remember from the um, those cheerleaders, the, uh, the Spirit Squad, I think that's to call themselves, uh, and Molly Holly were involved in the feud between both EO Sky, EO Sky, and of course Asuka. So that is something that's been revealed. So. I was a bit surprised, so I have to say they did a pretty good job with it. Um, Spark Yoshi Perusa has announced uh, for the Rising Heat West show on the 11th. They're going to have, of course, the first match has been announced. Uh, Miyu uh, Yamashita versus um, Billy Stark. So that's going to be a fun match to watch. Now, our last one, Eddie Kingston made an interesting tweet that I think we all need to pay attention and I think this is something for everybody to listen so this is what he had to say let me pull up oh here it is this is what he had to say due to being the new Japan strong open weight and the ring of honor champion I have to come to the hard decision that I have to do is stop doing independence dealing with a lower back injury right now I need to get fixed and will so I can be ready for all New Japan Strong shows and all three AW shows. When my responsibilities with New Japan and Ring of Honor is over, I will hopefully be able to do independence again. I apologize to all, but I need to focus and my, my body needs to be ready for those shows. So what do, what do we think about it? Well, me personally, I think this is the right choice. I mean, th this, is, this is only, let's just call it as a temporary uh, situation. Um, Eddie Kingston knows that he's double champion. He has to defend those belts at any given moment, no matter what. So he cannot be in independence um, doing this. So he has to focus on that. But once he's no longer either or or possibly no belts, he can go back to independence. So, but I hope he gets his lower back um, taken care of. Uh, you know, because you know he's probably gonna need it. So I think that's pretty much it what we have for our news update. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. Uh, Destruction is already here. Um, I'm sure we would review that. And of course, the latest Choco Pro show and there's very others. Oh, yeah. And the much recent All Japan show I just recently uh, stumbled upon. So I'll see how the next shows. I do know we have the some recent GCW shows I haven't recently seen yet but i'll do those as soon as possible um but for now let's just leave it as that and move forward but for now i will see you guys in the next dwz time same dwz channel i must bid all of you do so goodbye and have a nice day bang